Yes, and welcome once again to Aussie Tech Heads episode 316, the 15th of November 2011. How are you all uh, this episode? I hope you are well. Well, it's been a big news week this week, so we've got a, we've got a few stories to get through. And uh, to help us get through all the news and uh, so forth, uh, we'll do a quick welcome to the hosts. Welcome to the panel. It's Eric. Hi, Eric. Hello, sir. How do you do? Very well, thank you. Hi, Shane. Hey, how are we? Good, thanks. And hi, Will. Afternoon, all. How are we? All right. Very good. Very good. Evening, I suppose. Well, for some. Who knows? So, uh, yes, Aussie Tech Heads is brought to you by the hosting, aussietechheads.com.au forward slash hosting, where you can find a great hosting deal for your personal blog or for your business. Uh, We cater for everyone. So jump on there and have a look for some hosting deals. Great, great, great affordable professional hosting with, I think there's over 150 uh, self-installed applications you can put in there. WordPress, Joomla, um, Lime Survey, E, uh, Oz, Oz Commerce, there's heaps of them. All of it, there's heaps of them. Have a look, have a look in there and go go your hardest. Go mental, go mental. Now, welcome. Although you're not actually recommending people use all 150 of them. That's probably bad. Yeah, um, they might need a big plan. No, that'd be good. They need a bigger plan. <laughs> that'd be good for Glenn because yeah, like, use all of them. Yeah, he'd be posting it from Bermuda if he did that. <laughs> Install 150 of them twice. <laughs> all right. On each domain. That's, that's right. The buy up domains, suck them up like like Coca Cola. All right. Now, welcome to the lounge. Lounge joins us at uh, AussieTechEdge.com.au forward slash live every week in the lounge. And uh, they watch the live recording of the show. And you can too if uh, you just do the same. Point your browser to the same web page as those guys. And uh, the video of the show can be seen from clicking off the home page of the podcast uh, site. Um, so click on the video or YouTube. Wherever you want to go, YouTube, uh, AussieTechS.com.au forward slash YouTube, uh, forward slash video, sorry. All right, now what else is going on? Let's, uh, I don't know, let's get into some stories. Because no, there's, quick, yeah, yeah, just sorry, quickly Will. while we're talking about the, the web, your AussieTechS.com.au, or our AussieTechS.com.au, yes. um, you may just, can you just tell people what happened to me, how I got the error, and it's not really a problem with the, uh, the virus warning? Yeah, so it actually was a problem, and I know why you got that error, because you must have, did you come from the, the landing page? Or did you just nope, type I just in? typed in www.aussietechheads.com.au. Well, thankfully, because after you brought that to my attention, I went to the landing page and clicked on the icon, and it was linked with the www. So what was happening is the secured uh, socket is only on the uh, the secrethub.com address, okay? So that the hosting server uh, sits on the secret hub domain, okay? So, yep. um, so what happens is if you type in www, uh, because that's, you're trying to go to a secured site... And you're, and you're, well, I don't know how it works, but because you type www, uh, you get an error, but you can proceed past the error. It's nothing, it's nothing malicious. Yeah. It's just how it works. So, yeah. That's all I wanted to make people aware that you may get that error, but don't worry about it. It's until you buy a certificate, that's going to happen. And it probably will only happen once and not again. So, yeah. Well, I bought the certificate for the non www. But, um, but anyway, uh-huh. that's, that's how it works. I'll, I'll buy another one for the other one, and so there's no drama. But actually, it was, it was an error on the landing page as well. So thanks, Will. That should, have, that should be fixed now. I fixed that just earlier tonight. So it's all, uh, it all links straight into that. You won't see any red screens, hopefully. But if you do, it's us. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Proceed as normal. All right. Where are we going to start now? We're going to start here. This little story. Have you got one of these modems? Now, it's a Telstra Netcom 3G21WB modem. Now, apparently. Not, uh, not Netgear? Uh, Netcom. Okay. Is it? Uh, Netcom? What did I say? You said Netcom. Yeah, is no, it? No, I'm asking. It was not Netgear. No, I think it's Netcom. It's right. a, it's a Netcom modem. Uh, so that, that, well, you don't have one of those, do you? You've got a Netgear. Yeah, well, it's just as bad. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> anyway, hard coded usernames and passwords have been discovered in a recent line of the uh, of these modems. Now, the flaws meant attackers could bypass any unique passwords and access the device administrative console and con- customer's local network. So update and, inst- update and instructions are on the Telstra webpage, or you'll be able to find them easily and simply by going to the aussietechheads.com.au show notes. So front page, show notes. And then you can find the uh, look it up, and you'll find the instructions if you've got one of those routers. So, uh, so to, uh, the update to the firmware will fix the flaws. 
Um, the firmware upgrade was the only means of removing the unchangeable default logins introduced by Netcom into the Big Pond Elite Wireless Broadband Network Gateway line. So they've all been fixed up. The patch also introduced a feature allowing manual selection between external and internal antennas. There you go. Little little bonus as well. So, um, yeah, so that's probably pretty important if you've got one of those. So you'd want to make sure that you're all, you know, tied up and secured. So apply the update. Be careful, follow instructions. Read them twice because uh, it's a firmware update. So uh, go easy. All right, Eric, and you, you wanted to push something towards this story? Ah, uh, yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we all know last week that I had to order another um, modem from Telstra, the good the good Netgear. Yes. So I was quite happy. It arrived on the door two days later. I thought, oh, okay, that's good. Turned it on, switched it all up. Oh, it was no. worse than the one that they, it was worse than the one that, that they replaced it with. Oh, why? What do you mean worse? What was what was happening? Well, you know the one the one I've gone back to the old one. That was intermittent. It'd go, you know, normal five um, millisecond ping. I'd stay with 115 megabit download and two and a half up. I thought, okay, that's good. And every now and again, I'd get 300 millisecond ping, and it'd slow down to 50 megabyte, and you know, just really bad. Yeah. yeah. This one was constantly a 300 megabit ping, oh, me- millisecond ping, and and running at about 20 megabits. So, so n- needless to say, they 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 felt your uh, wrath. No, I haven't called them yet because I didn't want to. Give myself a heart so you're you're back on the old. I'm moment. back on the old one, and that's running at the moment pretty good. So okay, I've got right. a spare. I've got a spare that I didn't pay for right now. Good, but it doesn't work. So <laughs> it's well use, useless. Exactly. Put it the under doorstop. the Put it under the stove. Use it as a, a leveler. Now uh, yeah. Yeah, we know Will has got a Motorola. Is that right, Will? You got a Motorola modem? Uh, the older Surf one. Yeah. Okay. Um, but we. But we, that's. Yep. Yeah. Oh, just gonna say. Are you talking my Telstra or my Optus one? Ah, uh, your Optus. Optus. Yeah, I've got. I've actually got two. I've got a Motorola and I've got the Netgear. I think it is. Oh yeah. Well, which, I've got one of each. So which one you're on now? At the moment, I. Th- yes. All right. <laughs> and but what I'm I getting think at I'm on the Motorola. At the is moment. I don't think we've ever asked Shane. <laughs> which what one's modem? got the lights on? That's right. <laughs> I don't no, think... I'm looking, but I can't see it for me. I don't think we've ever asked Shane what modem he's got. What do you got, Shane? Um, I've only got a putt putt ADSL modem. Oh, just um, g- and generic it's, type it's of one. Uh, no, no, it's um, a Netgear. Uh, I want to say it's a DG834. No, that's an old one. I don't know. I will find out and let you know in a couple of minutes when I go into the web page. This right. is exactly what I have. I have. As you can see, this is, this is the one they sent me to fix the one that doesn't work. And once they sent me this one, the one that doesn't work works perfectly. But this is a Netgear CG3000. Nice. Um, wireless cable thingy. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it's funny. I had nothing but problems with this thing. What do you reckon, the one that's, what do you reckon yeah. their cost is on modems? 100 bucks. Uh, 12 reckon? bucks? Yeah. I was going to say, they, see, they seem to like just um, flash them around. No, and no the, way they're 100 bucks. Yeah, hundred bucks. Yeah, but they flash them. Hey. Out. They're not going to. Um, they don't follow them up, do they? Like they give them out to Eric and give them to Will. Will's got a truckload. Eric's starting the. He's starting his collection. They don't. I've like, got a shop. I've got. I've got a broadband modem <laughs> shop. I've got an Optus one in here as well. <laughs> yeah, I've got a couple of ADSL Telstra ones, in the, Netgear ones in the back there. I got. Yeah, I, I got uh, the old surfboard Telstra surfboard modem. I've got. I've got heaps of them. Um, there's no way they cost a hundred bucks, but they're only uh, the Piece most expensive part would be the the wireless chip in them. They're probably about thirty, nothing. probably about thirty, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's like, a um, who mine's cares? A, they don't work. <laughs> that's why they don't work. <laughs> so I'm curious to find out why you guys, um, unless you have to, I suppose, being on cable, why you go through the um, provider and you just don't go to you know, your local PC shop and buy one. Because you can't. With ADSL stuff, you can. You can pretty much, as long as it's the right standard, you can basically use any modem you want. With cable, you have to um, provision the modem. Um, the, the, well, if it's a Doxus 2, for example, there's like a billion and that gear and something else that support that particular standard. Um, and if it, 
if it's not on their list, they won't let you provision it. So with cable, yeah. you're a lot more tied down. Yeah, because it, 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 there's certain you know firmware or software or whatever it is in, inside the cable that's got a that's got a bolt onto their system. Uh, yeah, okay. specific. Um, it's a specific uh, handshake or something they must they must do. Mm. And I say I'll tell you just just as a off off track, the the LTE's been getting some good speeds here on the coast as well. Oh yeah, oh, baby. Yeah. Consistently sixty down and. 40, oh, that's 40, what she said. Forty-seven up. That's been growing crazy. Now, uh, uh, Frosty, I've yeah. got a billion seven hundred NN as well, mate. Seven eight hundred N, uh, the old ADSL, and that's also a um, <clears throat> that's a a cable modem and ADSL modem in one. Yeah, yeah. right. The billion seven eight hundred N, and they're, they're fantastic. They're actually a good modem. They are. They're brilliant. Oh, yeah. But but you can't up. There's no firmware upgrade. To make it a Doxus three, otherwise I'd be using it. Yeah. I, look, I like Billion. I think that I think they're pretty good stuff. I like them. I agree. As long as you stay away from their entry level stuff, but it's like any company, stay away from their. Bulk go to the middle. Just go to standard the middle. Standard entry level. Yeah, go yeah. to the middle or the professional grade, mm. and it's good stuff. Now, so obviously I I don't have a modem collection because I got a Cisco. <laughs> So. Yes, okay, move along. <laughs> all right, so, all right, next story, next one. Now, I've got another one here. Uh, I don't know if you really care, but anyway, the Microsoft Windows boss has stepped down. Now, I don't know if you would have watched the the launch of the Surface. And Wasn't Windows he 8. sacked? I heard he was sacked. It was a reshuffle. But once again, Steve Ballmer made the right decision, and the rumour is that he was starting to feel threatened because this Sanofsky guy... Is like a bit of a, a bit of a Steve Jobs, and he's pretty good at what he does. Mm. And he, I think he was um, Bormer was under threat, and the ball headed Bormer couldn't couldn't cope, so they booted him out. Well, Sanofsky's well a bit done. Of a... Well, that isn't that great. You be, you get rid of your best performers yeah, because well, you're feeling threatened. Threatened. Yeah, that's right. If Kerry Packer did that, what he would have lost his money in a heartbeat. Well, Sen- Sanofsky's a bit of a um, bit of a golf ball as well, and there he is. There got a little picture of him. Say so, ta-da. So he he's, he's gone. Just, and, but he's a smart golf ball, and he's leaving the. He's leaving immediately. There's no. There's no two week notice for him, and in comes. He got pushed. Yes, sounds like it. And in comes. He Duke. says he, they always. They always put down he resigned, but the thing is, they've asked him for his resignation. Mm. Yeah, mm. but and they never mentioned the the golden handshake at the other end of it either. Oh no, he'd be he'd be walking out with about fifty mil. Don't worry about that with his options yeah, and, exactly. and and all that sort of stuff. So. To, to you, Mr. Sanofsky, Apple will have you any day, I say. I hear there's um, positions available at BlackBerry. There yeah. could be. And actually, we might... There's only one position going because there's only one staff member left. <laughs> now, we got, a, we got a... I think someone had a quick little thing for BlackBerry, but we'll just get to that in a second. Um, but, of course, uh, the person that's coming in is the lady, as the, you can see in that picture there, if you're watching us on the video, and that's Julie Larson-Green. Oh, one of those hyphenated names. So she is now the head of Windows Hardware and Software Division. Uh, nice sweater. <laughs> the uh, Microsoft gave no reason for Sanofsky's departure, but she was at the launch as well, wasn't she? She was one of the. She was. Yeah, she had a knife. She had a knife in her hand. <laughs> pointed, pointed at his back. Wasn't she? Wasn't she a, oh, I did read somewhere she was a senior analyst or something before she. Oh, yeah. oh what, Will? What, did, what, what was that? What did you say? Nothing. <laughs> a senior analyst. <laughs> right. There you go. Is that, is that... Yeah, what he said. But she was something that's absolutely completely unrelated to the position that she is now. Yeah, no experience, in other words. In other words, it's going to be a disaster. And Bournemouth gets to keep his job because everyone underneath him are boneheads. Yeah. Well, See? so far. He can't Why be threatened. He... Well, <laughs> the share price hasn't moved in 15 years. Ah, but it hasn't gone down, has it? <laughs> yeah, but it's been no growth. You'd be better off putting yeah, your money under a mattress. Right. It's the worst for investors. Do they get in dividends? <clears throat> yeah, very small ones. Hmm. All right. Now we mentioned uh, BlackBerry. Now I think Shane, you had a little, a little piece about BlackBerry. Uh, I did. You're going off script, Glenn. Um. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be your. That'd be your third last story. I did to give you a warning. I said someone had a story about BlackBerry, so I chucked a little, chucked a little warning in there. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, I found it. Uh, Rim plans to would be uh, would be BlackBerry 
10 game developers with uh, money and hardware. Yeah, good luck so, with that. Right? Yeah, basically the story goes on to sort of say that, you know, um, exactly what the, the kind of um, byline says, that they're actually just paying um, or offering or blackmailing or bribing. Um, In, incentivising, <laughs> let's call it that. Well, you, you'd be better off to... Um, would be BlackBerry. Yeah, you'd be, you'd be, you'd be well advised to, to do that, wouldn't you? Like You get paid for creating a BlackBerry and then a BlackBerry app and then at the same time just run it through a like some sort of exporter, importer thing or whatever you've got to do and then and bung it into Apple and Android at the same time and make more money. Why wouldn't you do it the other way around, though? Like You well, wouldn't primarily recreate a BlackBerry app because it'll break everything else. Yeah, but if you're going to get paid to do it, <laughs> there might be some condition where you, it's got to be released on BlackBerry first. Or yeah, but the most. 11 users that are going to use it aren't going to pay you as much as the millions of other ones. So, I mean, I know it's, it's, it's good in theory, but... I, mm, yeah, nah, well, look, I'm just... I'm, I think, you've, number one, you've got to have a good platform, number one. Number two, you've got to have um, good software, mm. and they have neither. So but, I don't know. I can understand why they're doing because they want to draw people back, and hopefully they'll get some momentum. But they're missing the point. It's just, this is a band-aid solution. You've got to improve your innovative attitude towards things. Don't be so cocky and arrogant and say things like, "I oh, should be right." Apple, <laughs> iPhone, oh, who's going to buy that? Um, you know, Android, oh, who's going to buy that? You know, the arrogance has got to go, and they've mm -hmm. got to do what Microsoft has done: Windows 8 and start actually developing, um, you know, good software, good platforms. But what, actually, that, but what that article is actually getting at is that the RIM is going to pay you to develop, not not just pay you off the store. They're going to pay yeah, you. Oh, yeah, I know that, but it's still, that's just, that's, but, when you look at it this way, if you, were a, if you were a good platform, you wouldn't need to be paid. You don't need to pay anyone to develop. They'd be happy just to take the 70% the from every app that they sold. But because yeah. it's such a horrible platform, yeah, they've got to effectively bribe someone. But I'm, I'm looking at the, to the, from the point of view of the developer. <coughs> you're better off. You, you, you do that because you're getting paid to do it. But at the same time, you've been paid to develop something and you've already got the product where you can just port it across to the others. So well, get, but, but, but it's, not, it's not that easy, mate. You can't just press a button and port it across. Oh, there it's so. still more development time. Uh, not much. If you, actually, if you actually read it, it says that you can either create a new game or you can port an existing game from another platform. So this argument's invalid because you create it for Android or iPhone and, or Windows and port it across to BlackBerry, and mm. they're still going to pay you for it. So, Fair enough. Now, um, now, Eric, what's going on with the clock Oh, the clock. The clock. <laughs> now, I've had a look at this clock. Oh, no, you tell your story first, and then, then I'll, I'll right. tell you what I've had a look at. <clears throat> Apple pays $20 million to use the Swiss railway clock, Swiss rail clock. Apple has paid 20 million Swiss francs, or 20.27 million US dollars, or 30 million Australian dollars. Wow, currency that's worth less than the US. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a first for a while. To compensate Swiss National Rail, Swiss National Rail <laughs> operator SBB for using its famous clock, you know the fame, you know, the, 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 the not the clock itself, but the famous the design, uh, the look. badly written, the clock look design, yep. Yep. without permission. Now, go on. I you're going to say yeah. Something. Well, I was just going to say, who cares? And are you saying, or is this article suggesting, or is it been suggested that the Swiss what was it? Train station or something? Mm. The Swiss, Swiss rail clock. They've, yeah, they've, 1944. They've, they've trademarked or patented the look of this That's clock. That's patented. Everyone that uses that look of a clock has to pay a license fee. Are you yep. serious? Deadly serious. You don't. You yeah, haven't been around long, have you? Well, all the watches you... that, that use that look, they've, they've all got to pay a They're all like patent. Yeah, you right. buy any watch, you will buy, You go buy an Amiga watch, and then you buy a, a, um, a Targ watch or a Seiko or a, or a Patek Philippe. They all look different because you can't just copy people's designs. Yeah, right. But that's it, a design. But isn't it? Yeah, okay. So the design, okay, radio. I was going to say, well, I thought I would have thought a clock was a bit of a generic type of thing, but I guess yeah. you can have different designs with the I big, mean, the big red knob on it's it. It's a design. Stuff. You can't trademark a clock that counts from twelve to twelve. I mean, because no, that's, that's the way it works. That, but but you can designate the way that you want it to, 
to suing look, look. Mm. Yeah. and that look in much the same way that iPhone suing Samsung because Samsung looks like the iPhone. It's exactly or, the same principle. Or you just can't copy, go and get a BMW, take it to China and go, oh, we'll copy it and we'll call it uh, AMW. Uh, no, actually, you can. Well, in that. China, in you China. can. <laughs> <laughs> but they're shutting them down. But the point is, you just can't do that. I right? would never have thought, it would never have crossed my mind to trade to patent a clock design, like a clock face design. That's why you don't right. have any money. That's why you don't have $20 million. <laughs> That's probably true. That's probably true. That's what, that's what, yeah. where we all gone wrong. We've all gone wrong. All right. That's it. I'm, I'm going to start thinking about so, something else. There you go. So they used but, it without permission. Mm-hmm. It was, yeah. the, the, cl- the clock was designed in 1944 by Swiss engineer Hans Hilfiger and remains the property of SBB. And it's still used in all SBB railway stations. And in the article, they, they say they don't mind people using it in uh, drawings or cartoons or things like that. But yeah, more, fair use. You know, fair use, exactly. They, they haven't, don't have a problem with that, like Apple seems to. But they. <laughs> but when um, you're using it to actually improve your own money. product or yeah. your own <laughs> offerings, which means you're making money, then that's yeah. an issue. That's an issue. That's right. Now, uh, Will, you've, you've got a couple of little. Uh, Little stories here. What, what's uh, you, will you start off with one? What do you want to talk about first? Um, well, we're all coming into into Christmas time, so you know, we're looking for the cheapest possible way to get out of giving somebody something that appears to be cool. So you can give your in-laws a Android phone now from Coles for forty four fifty. It's <laughs> it's a, uh, a fully functional Android phone. It, it, it's actually not bad. I had a play with one today just because well, I was in it. Coles and, yeah. and happened to and happened to come across it. Um, it's two point eight screen, so it's relatively small, but it's primarily for making phone calls. Two meg camera, which is actually semi decent for once, and a thirty two meg or up to thirty two meg micro SD. Uh, it's running Android ugh, Android two point three gingerbread, so it's a little bit old, but it's still fully functional. Has Wi Fi, has uh, has GPS, has all that sort of stuff. And it comes with ten bucks prepaid as well. Uh, and a two gig micro SD, and it's yeah forty four bucks. I mean, I saw a poxy little candy bar phone with no camera or anything for like forty eight. So to be you know what, it's with Telstra, so you get the the good speeds. It's so not, well, not you actually get signal as well. Yeah, for um, a change, as opposed to all the Vodafone phones. Yeah, you're available. listening. You're listening, Vodafone. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, well. uh, they they had it. Yeah, sorry, we'll keep going. I was going to say, they did bring it out last year, uh, funnily enough, around this time, and it was 80 bucks, 89 bucks, and it actually sold really well. It's basically exactly the same phone. They've just cut it in half down to 44 bucks. And if you want to get somebody, you know, because being an Android device, you can lock it up however you want. So you could get it for your kid for school. You could get it for your in-laws because you can pretend you care. Um, you know, if you just want a car to keep in, <laughs> want a phone to keep in the car or, or whatever, uh, an emergency phone because it is prepaid on Telstra. So it yeah. won't use the credit until it's activated. So you could leave it in the in the glove box of the car with the car charger there. Just and speaking about an emergency phone. So giving it, giving it to your outlaws, you get one of those phones and then hook it up with TPG. And give that one to you, Atlas. <laughs> yeah, all virgin. Because wasn't uh, it through the week TPG? Just, just that... back on back on Telstra at the moment. If anyone that's looking after prepaid data, I'm not sure whether it's for iPad or you know dongle or whatnot. Fifteen gigs for fifty bucks. Yeah, that's oh, for yeah. the new. That's a pr- pr- I think I read that today. That was a new promo for the new 4G dongle they've just released. There you go. How good's that? And who was that with? Four, Telstra. Four G, fifty bucks for fifteen gigs. Yep. That's all right. It'll, it'll it'll go in like uh, two seconds, but uh, that's nah, all right. No. <laughs> now, just, right. just I'll just touch on something there. What what Will was talking about? Uh, something about Vodafone and whatever. Uh, just uh, just quickly, their, their their numbers are continuing to fall from down from <laughs> three point two five million in July to three point one seven million uh, in September. Ooh, ouch! So, yeah, so it's only like it's only. And you know, you know what the funny thing is? They've all gone to Optus. Instead of Telstra and Optus's, Optus's uh, network, is you can barely get a signal even if you're not next to the tower. Yeah. Depends on where you are. See up here, Optus is actually pretty. Oh, good. Optus in Queensland's pretty good. Sydney, yeah. you wouldn't touch Optus in Sydney. Well, I've never had a problem with Optus when I was in Queensland. When I was on Optus, and I'd go yeah. up to um, Port Douglas because the 2100 band up there is just yep. screaming fast. Well, um, that's, see, that's the old conversion off the old analog towers. Yeah, but down here. 
Oh, geez. If you put your phone in front of a garbage bin, you get no signal. That's how bad it is. Vodafone has um, lost, and lost in, ex- they- in excess of half a million customers over the past 18 months, and the company's hmm. indicated uh, it, it won't have a 4G network until sometime next year. <laughs> So Good one. That's not helping us. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on. A minute. Well done. You know what? The, you know, Vodafone should merge with BlackBerry. <laughs> All their users that have signal. Well done. How that works? Only BlackBerry works on Vodafone network. That'd be perfect. Right. Have just and about the right amount of users. They're just as arrogant and just as useless as one another. It's a marriage made in heaven. Now, <laughs> now, um, what uh, what type of network do you think that this that this um, space station commander is on? That controls Lego robots. Oh, yeah. How so, awesome was that? So, I think, Shane, you had that one. Uh, yes, I did. Um, and I found it. Oh, good. So, yeah, basically, there was um, two stories during the week. Yeah. <laughs> this is part of the initiation for the new guy, isn't it? That's right. Um, no, no. Yeah, so it, it's always like no. that. <laughs> always. Uh, all right, so there was actually two stories during the week. One earlier on in the week where it um, went on about how they were testing it and they were doing it like on you know, on Earth trials. Um, and then the, the recent story or the story that I've put forward is the one where they actually um, controlled yeah, a, a Lego robot from uh, the space station. Basically, the um, story goes on to say that they had to um, develop a new set of protocols because obviously with the delay, even um, the delay as close as the, the space station or the, or the moon, I believe is like a, a second or second and a half or something. Yeah, 1.7. Yeah, and then going forward when you're looking at Mars and places like that, you're looking at minutes of a delay. Um, and then you, know, you get all the other interference with radiation going through space because it doesn't have the protection of the atmosphere and all that kind of stuff. They had to um, develop all these new protocols and, and yeah, right. they're up to the point where they're testing them. Nice, nice. So, uh, yeah, that, that's interesting, the things that they can do these days. Now, um, yeah, so did anyone um, – did we get the eclipse down here? Did we see that down this far down? Yeah. Um, it was about a 85% coverage here. Uh, okay. There's actually photos up on my – well, if you go to my uh, Facebook page, we've got some photos I took there through a – welding mask uh, lens because yep. I didn't have – you needed like three polarizing filters to be able to see yeah, it properly. Right. So yep. I just used a welding mask. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, well, I, I forgot all about it. I forgot all about it. Did you hear about the, the guy, the, the – was, was it Jetstar? Yeah, J- the Jetstar guy that um, he for – tw- oh, this is the so, you know, how the story goes – that he um, – for 20 years he wanted to go and see this eclipse. So he, he's booked his flight on Jetstar six months ago. Oh, <laughs> right to get there and so the night before was it or something like that they go no no i think he got to the airport go, yeah oh, cancelled yeah, sorry yeah. cancelled your flight your flight's you're, on, you're on a later flight you're on another one yeah and, and apparently <laughs> but my question is why did he leave it so late why did he get there the night before really yeah. that's bad planning you don't get there you don't leave to see the eclipse on the day of the eclipse what oh. a moron yeah, well, I suppose, but well, maybe, maybe that was. Unless just... you wanted to see it from the aeroplane. That's right. Well, maybe that was just these. Like with anything, it might have been a little side story just to try and get some compo. You know. Yes, out, maybe. You know, little. I'm sorry, luck with that. If, you, if you're planning, yes, I don't care about anybody. If you're hmm. planning something important, like oh, I don't know, a rendezvous with an eclipse, wouldn't you take a reputable airline like Anset? I mean, they always matter. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, Anset. Anset, <laughs> yeah. the best yeah. choice. What was their <laughs> What was their tagline? What was their um? Can you, anyone remember their um their jingle? We won't fly, get there overnight. Fly further, fly there. Anset, something like that. <laughs> was that it? Fly further, fly Anset. I think that was it. Yeah. Sorry, sir. Further but... because you had to circle the airport for an hour before you could land. But yeah, so, sorry, sir. That, and you didn't have enough fuel because you didn't have any money to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, they, they tell you. You get to the airport, and they go, "Oh, sorry, but that uh, that flight was cancelled twenty years ago." Sorry, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> sorry about that. The uh, 19, 1989 flight to Cairns is now being cancelled. <laughs> sorry, I mean, how the about that? Information's just looped us, looped back to us from around Mars. Just a bit of a delay. <laughs> well, Aussie Tech Marzi has just commented that he only flies Qantas. Yeah, good luck with that, Marzi. <laughs> <laughs> look, I think, look, flying overseas or something, I think I'd be a Qantas person. I don't know if I'd... Oh, no, you wouldn't, mate. Yes, no, wouldn't. you wouldn't. I'm All right, okay, you do that, mate. I Just take your take your next overseas trip and um, you go on Qantas, mate. You let me know how that goes. Why? What's it wrong with It depends on where you're going, I think. Why? What's oh, wrong? Qantas is shocking. 
The well, friend of mine I just want to get there. I to... trust them. The friend of mine oh. flies uh, Emirates You're... all the time, and they love it. Oh, Emirates are great. Mm. Qantas, you guys have no idea. Seriously. Well, I don't fly. I don't have enough money. <laughs> I don't fly. Well done, Marzi. Sorry. What's he saying? I can't see the chat room. <laughs> I just looked back in the chat room and, and Marzi said he only flies Qantas. And, uh, and he, his reasoning for it is that the skirts are shorter. <laughs> and Milo likes, Milo likes Emirates. E-M-R-I-T-S. Emirates? Emirates. Isn't that something you, isn't that, that thing made out of pork belly? Yeah, it is. You get it, in, you get it in Kentucky. And it, goes with your, it goes with your grits. Grits. <laughs> and Emirates flight had to return to Sydney the other day. Yeah, it's right. Engine blow up. I'll tell yeah, you. Burn strike or something. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what's getting ridiculous. I don't know if you guys get it as well, but on our local ABC radio, you know you get your traffic report. We're getting the airport report. We're getting what? <laughs> We are getting oh, the plane XCQ53 from New Zealand has been delayed by six hours. We're getting, no one cares. Yeah, like, who cares? Keep them, keep, them in, keep them in New Zealand, I say. But I mean, like, who cares? Like, I don't even care if it was a plane from Melbourne. Like, why on the radio? Why? I don't. I don't because get ABC it. got nothing else better to do. Don't get we used it. to live near a uh, taxi depot, like three houses down from a taxi depot. And every time they transmitted or received something to and from the depot, it cut into our TV and radio. So you <laughs> <could> keep watching. <laughs> nice work. Every time. Nice work. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Now, now we all we all like a we all like a good uh, good bit of waste of money when it comes to the government. How do you? How do you oh, like... <laughs> please don't don't roll me up. How do you like this one? You remember the good old mandatory ISP filter? Yes. Oh, yeah. good. I'm it's, glad you're going, this, so the going federal, down this road. The federal government has formally abandoned plans to introduce legislation for the mandatory ISP filtering and, and, and has closed the chapter on this particular thing. As, but, we, as we knew they would. As we knew they would. Now, what, now I've got here something. It's... Um, it says, so instead, internet service providers will be directed by the government and the Australian Federal Police to block child abuse websites that feature on an Interpol block list. Well, this could have saved us it. a lot of money. And, and that's it. Yeah, Conroy unveiled plans for the mandatory internet filter plan in May 2008 uh, as part of Labor's $125.8 million cyber safety plan. Now, I'm not saying that this whole thing would have cost that $125.8 No, million. they've already spent that money. They've already well, spent that easy. money rolling out all that software yeah. that didn't work that they hacked in five minutes flat. No, that <laughs> That's was already, that well, money's been Johnny. spent. That was Johnny that, that that rolled that out, wasn't it? Oh, was it? Was that Johnny? Was it? Yeah, but I think Labor then their yeah, Labor kicked it on the head and they wanted to do their own little. And piece they did, of oh, crap. the typical thing like they did with the boats. Yeah, that's working out well for you too. Yeah. <laughs> but have you noticed? So the ISPs have kind of taken advantage of this to some degree because they offer antivirus and anti spyware and website protection at their end. That's right. For only but, you know fifteen or twenty bucks a month. But not only that, a lot of the ISPs have come out and said, we've been doing this for years anyway. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, so, but, well, but Conroy's going to make it sound like, I order you to yeah. do this because I'm Senator Conroy and I've got a haircut that was cut by my mother with a bowl. Well, I just, I just, so you do what you're told. <laughs> and it, it was a, it was a potty, not a bowl. Now, I just wanted to, yeah. I just wanted to pick that up. So I picked that story and it wasn't up. empty. No, that's right. That's why he's always got that um, that wet look, wet behind the ears. But I picked this story up because um, I'm just like this is just another example of just a waste of money. Like we all knew where this was going, but it's just all this money that gets it was tied never up, going to work. It gets tied it's just up money. and flushed down the toilet. It really, you know it why, really, Glenn? Really you know why? Get because, it's, because it's not their money. Yeah, I it's know. easy to spend money that doesn't belong to you. Yep, yep. If it was your hard-earned money. You'd be very careful with it. I think they look at these things and they say, oh, you know, well, we've got an entire budget of, like, you know, so many billion dollars. Well, what's well they inherited $60 billion and they thought, like most ignorant people who have never had money in their life, they get a million dollars and they think it's going to last forever. And they yeah. spend it in six months and go, oh, what happened there? <laughs> now I'm back on drugs on the street and man drew it. I yeah, just, mate, you got, hey, mate, you got 20 yeah. bucks. Because we all knew as soon as this came out, I think pretty much all of us here were we, we just saying it's not going to work. Because the people won't let it work. The internet users are not going to. There'll be back doors, side doors, you know, round, round, round the, round the world doors. Uh, yeah, it's not, not only work. that. You got the, you got the dark, the which got the grey internet. Where mm. pirate, you can still go to Pirate Bay, if you knew how. That's that lurks out there. They got. But how are they going to stop that? Yeah. Oh, that's right. How are you going to stop that? Yeah, you can't. But um, Will, what's a humble, humble bundle? 
That is a really fantastic concept, actually. Um, and you've caught me in the middle of typing in the chat room. But uh, sorry, Will. Uh, it basically, it's a really good idea. It's what it is. <clears throat> all the in the independent developers or indie developers struggle a lot. You know, they don't get the mentions, they don't get their, their software out there. So the hum the Humble Bundle 4 is now available. And basically what it is, uh, it's an initiative designed to sell and promote indie, indie games. Um, it has a number of cool games. Uh, they're sold DRM free on their device, on their websites. And it's a price that you determine. So for example, you could pay five dollars and get there's five games in the bundle so you could think a dollar each is is pretty neat uh i mean you could pay a dollar if you want to um but as an incentive to pay a bit more what they do is say if you pay the average or above which at the time of this article was five dollars eighty they actually throw in another game for free as well um, of your choice of yeah, of a certain selection. So, little, uh, little brick in, out. In this case, the four that came with it was <laughs> uh, Crayon Physics Deluxe, Euphoria, Splice, Super Brothers, Sword and Sorcery, and Walking Mars. And then you could pay, you know, if you paid the five dollars eighty or more, you got uh, uh, Manchurian or something like that, and a couple of other games as well. But you also get the PC version of the games, or you know, the Windows, Linux, or Mac oh, version yeah. of the games as well. Uh, which are DRM free, so you know you can keep them and format your computer and you can still use them again. Uh, you also get the soundtrack to download, the DRM free, from each of the games. And if you pay an extra dollar on top of your donation, you'll also get the Steam keys to download them and unlock them from Steam. So <clears throat> the other cool part about it is that it splits it up in different ways. You can choose... Um, obviously, you have 100% to play with and you can split your percentages into... Uh, how much the developers get, how much the charity, a particular charity gets, and yeah, how right. much the humble bun, hum, humble bundle incorporated actually gets. So if the default is set to uh, sixty five percent for the developer, twenty five percent for charity, and fifteen percent for the company. But if you want to, you can give them all to the developers. If you think their games really suck, you can give them all to charity. You know, it's entirely up to you how you how you give them the money that you've donated. So I reckon that's a really fantastic idea. Hmm. It's a great way to get indie artists recognised. Yeah, yeah, so. for sure. Yeah, and certainly, it's certainly novel anyway. Yeah, well, that sounds good. Um, yeah, I like how you can split it up. That's, um, yeah. that's real good. I wonder how the charities fare. Like, you know, if you could... At some stage, we get a breakdown of it all, and just wonder how how many people just give a give their bit to charity. But well, they actually have all that on the website. If you go to the website and have a look, it actually tells you the total amount they've raised. Oh right, right. Uh, the percentages that it's all been split off, how much each particular department's got. So, mm. for example, you say you know you've got a spare, you know you're not broke, you know you might have a hundred bucks you want to throw at this. And you suddenly realise that everybody's been, you know, ditching the charities because for whatever reason they don't want to. So you could, if you wanted to, you know, throw that hundred bucks just towards the charity. So it's pretty neat, actually. It's a really good idea. I'd love to see it um, more than just, you know, just indie games. I'd love to see. There's a lot of apps out there that should benefit from this. There's a lot of songs and music. Uh, there's a lot of fantastic, in, you know, really clever people on YouTube who could really use some sort of kickstart like this. Mm. So I think it's a really good format and give it a couple of years and I, I'd really love to see this sort of become a mainstream way of promoting indie good developers. Stuff. Well, they got your vote by the sounds of it, Will, for sure. So that's, that's you you may have covered this or said this, Will, but do you get to pick the charity? Uh, I can't remember. There is... Uh, they they are registered with a few charities. I can't remember off the top of my head. I haven't been to the website. You can go to the website and have a look. Mm. La the last one that was out, this is the fourth bundle. Um, on the third one, you could you could pick your charity. So I'm, I'm assuming you can, but I haven't actually looked at it for a while. Good stuff. Okay. Right. Now, um, Eric, you, you've got yes. um, LTE iPad minis. What's going on there? Yes. Well, I don't, but other <laughs> people do. you got Wi-Fi, haven't you? I've got the Wi-Fi. So yes, how's that going? How um, is it? Oh, it's good. It's very good. I've got it right here somewhere. Yep, so you've been using it a bit? Hang on, hang on a minute. Hang on. It's, <laughs> it's my Galaxy Note. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep. Uh, there you go. That's my Galaxy Note. Oh, good. 
no, it's, no, it's very good. It's uh, it's it's pretty quick. It's pretty nif. It's very uh, nippy. Very yep. nice. It's a ni- nice unit. It's light. Reading the books is um, it's still not as good as a, as a Kindle reading a book, but then again, the Kindle was specifically built and designed for books. So, if you had a choice, iPad Mini or iPad Four? What? iPad Mini. Really? The iPad Four. You look at it now; it's too big. Yeah. Once you've had this, and yeah. that's what I said. I I told you that's exactly what everybody's going. No, I believed you. This won't work. I, I, I believed you. I still and don't. Every, virtually everybody said no. It's ten inches for a reason because it's the way to go. But everybody who's used the mini says this is a much better format. <laughs> Nah. Yes, um, and as you, uh, back to your point quickly about it being rather quick and snappy and, and performance based. That's because it doesn't have the OLED screen. It doesn't have the punt. Uh, not not OLED. Sorry, Retina display. It doesn't have to try and handle such a high resolution, so they can put more performance back onto the CPU for for agree you know, everything agree. else. Agree. So. And the thing is, you don't really need it. The screen is brilliant on this. Mm. Now, so I can I can understand why they wouldn't put it. But back to my story. Yes. <clears throat> Customers on Tuesday, in this is in America, began receiving word from Apple's online store that their orders for the new iPad Mini with LTE connectivity have begun shipping. There you go. Um, there you go. Do you really need LTE on your? Um... Oh yeah, yeah, LTE you would. Yep, 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 yep. The... It's certainly handy. I mean, I've got a t- I've got a seven inch Galaxy Tab. Ninety nine percent of the time, it's used on Wi Fi. Um, but that odd time that you you need that data out and about, yeah, you know. Mm. Sometimes you just it's the convenience of just opening the iPad and going right, I'm on, rather than going, hang on, let me turn my hotspot on, let me type in the password. You know what I mean? So in that respect, it's handy, but you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want I didn't want another plan. I didn't want another thirty bucks a month, basically. Yeah, true. Yeah. Well, I don't mind turning a hotspot on. That's that's all right. It's going to save me. Yeah, look, months, I can so. deal with it. You know. Yeah, and I like but, also. Uh, I, I get to use my Swiss clock on it. Oh, good. I like, <laughs> I like also how actually with the iOS that the you got that little red bar that tells you that the hotspot's on. I like that. Yes, I like. Oh, it. I got a blue bar. Can you see that? Well, it's configurable. Is it? No. It's talk, that's Eric. the clock. That's it. That's, oh, that's the clock. Oh right. Yes. Right. Right. Well, there you go. Fancy that getting paint painting the whole clock, world eh? there, yeah. all the all the all the time zones. Yeah, nice, nice. And that is that. That's the mini, isn't it? That's the mini. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Still don't know. Still don't know. But I, I think, mean, Glenn, if you go into your clock, I think if you're on running iOS six point zero one, you will have the same clock. Well, I probably would have. Let, let. I mean, I think there's a, there's a point to be made too that a lot of people are saying don't buy this one, especially if you listen to uh, the Twit Network with Leo Laporte. He had a review on it, and he was saying that he was not impressed with the screen, especially after having using you have ah, yeah. after using the, the Retina display and going back to the normal display. Yeah. Um, he was saying that it was a little bit awkward, and all you've got to do is hang around for uh, you know the next. The next uh, three there to six, go. three to six months, and they're going to release um, probably one with a Retina display, anyways. So. Yeah, look, that's that's possibly true for a lot of people who have been on Retina for a while. You do yeah. notice the difference, but it's still a better screen than the iPad one or two. Mm. Much better. All right, that's good. That's good. Well, what we're going to do? We're going to um, have a listen to Garth. He's got a he's got another little iOS review, and then we're going to come back after Garth. I've we're... got an Audible book too, by the way. Oh, well, we better uh, go to Garth. We'll come back, and we'll have to uh, listen to Eric's Audible review. All right, so let's see if we can get Garth working properly this week. <laughs> it's always an unknown, I tell you. It's always an unknown. All right, let's try how this goes. Okay, back in a sec. Hi, everyone. Glenn and Garth back with you once again this week. This week, we've got a app called Corks. Take it away, Garth. Corks. Hey, Glenn. How are you, man? Good, good. Good. What do you got? So, Corks is a... Well, now that wines tend to have screw tops rather than corks, we've got an app called Corks. Right. So, it's actually cor.kz, okay, for Corks. Um, Basically, it's an app to... what do they say? It's like having a similar in, in your pocket. Yes, now I had to I look up. I take the... on that take on that <laughs> word twice. <laughs> I had to. Don't worry, I had to look up what it was even uh, the the meaning of simelian. Simi- or... That's it. That's oh. the one we were looking for. <laughs> oh, so no, basically it, it's it helps you, um, a lot of a few different things towards wines. So um, helps you track 
particular ones you've drunk, so you can... I know personally I'll enjoy a bottle of wine, I go, have to remember that one, get it again. Yep. No idea what the hell it was yep. when it comes next time to buy one. I know I like certain, you know, I love Cabernets and I love Shirazes, but couldn't tell you which particular ones. Yes. So this will, um, you can do a scan of it and it'll remember the wine for you. Nice. Um, you, can add, you can add public um, notes for the wine, taste notes. Right, right. You can see other people's taste notes for particular wines. Right. Um, wines from all over the world. They've got a database of about 1.5 million different wines. It's amazing. I know. And what did we see? 120,000 Australian wines or something like yep. that in there? And 3 million reviews. So, yeah, I guess for every wine, someone's put in two reviews. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there's that aspect of it. It also helps you compare different wines. Um, I think it'll show you pricing information at some points as well. So scan the barcode in off yep. the bottle. And uh, away you go. Exactly. And away you go. So we're, they're seeing about 65% success rate on scan codes, and it's getting yeah. better every day. I hope so, because the little bit of trial we gave it, we, we, I haven't had any well. luck yet. <laughs> I haven't had luck with that. So, but yeah, still, so it's got your consumption yeah. history, seller management, social connection, pricing, <laughs> reference, and a big dictionary or a big, yeah, a big, um, a, a big database of what, what is out there. So you know how to t tell somebody that the wine actually tasted good. As mm. opposed to just saying, well, this is really good wine. Mm. <laughs> That's right. So, uh, yeah, Cork, C-O-R.K-Z is, is obviously probably going to be the web page, but yeah. just go into the App Store. And where is it on, in the App Store? It's the same thing. I just searched thing. Corks and got it. Yeah, C-O-R.K-Z. That's what I searched and it came up straight away. Right. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. And it's, it's not a free one, but it's, uh, it's, it's cheap. $2.99. $2.99. Yeah. yeah. So good on you, Gar. Thanks for that one. There nice. is a, there is just quickly just before you go. There is one for the Android phone. I know this is an a, a, a iOS yeah, no, thing. Yeah, no, we've got to cover that. Too. But there there yeah. is one. It's not it's not a wine one, but it's called Alco Droid, and it okay. and it, 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 it counts <laughs> the amount of drinks that you have because every time you have a drink, you ah, punch the button, yeah. and then it tells you how what your blood alcohol level is at. <laughs> Do you get to point in whether it was a standard drink or not? Yes, yes, totally customizable. Sweet as. I totally. need one of those as well. There's you got can... to be one of those for iOS. Oh, someone, I had a, I had someone write in and tell us. I had a quick look, but yep. um, I couldn't find anything. But yeah, someone write right. in, garth at aussietechheads.com.au. Let see, me know. See you next week. Bye. Oh, thanks, Garth. That's, uh, once again, a very informative iOS review. You can find Garth's uh, reviews in their uh, singularity. <laughs> on um, the webpage, aussietechheads.com.au. Look for up under show or something then under iOS reviews and, uh, just the, and they're on YouTube as well. So if you don't want to trawl through the whole show for his reviews, watch them as a playlist even. Might, might have to set that up in the YouTube, a little Garth playlist. All right. Now, Eric, yeah, we'll, go, we'll cross to you and go straight into your Audible. What's Hello, that? sir. I'm back. Oh, Echo. Turn the orcs down. Okay, yep. Hello. Oh, sorry about that. That's all right. Now I um I bought the um what you call it the ebook for this particular book, and at the same time I had a look at the audio book, and it's called it's a it's a John John Grisham book. If everyone knows John Grisham, he likes a lot of he writes a lot of legal thrillers. Very easy to read, um, you know, yeah, relaxing sort of stuff. Nothing too heavy, but it's a very good writer. A relaxing thriller. A relaxing thriller. <laughs> if if you know what I mean. Well, I watched a movie the other day called uh, Red Lights. I don't know if you've seen that or not. That was okay. No, I can imagine what that's about. No, Sigourney Weaver and um, oh, what that other dude in it. It was good. Yep, anyway. <laughs> other dude? So you're calling her a dude? No. Um, I don't know what his name is. I forget his name. Oh, I shouldn't. All right. But, you know, he's, he's well known. <clears throat> What's his name? Um, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. Go. Okay. All right. Given the importance of what they do and controversies that often surround them and the violent people they sometimes confront, sounds like Parliament, it is remarkable that in the history of the USA only four active federal judges have been murdered. Really? Judge Raymond Fawcett just became number five. His body was found in the small basement of a lakeside cabin. Ooh. Right, here we go. So that's, there's a little teaser for you. Mm. Here we go, and I'm going to play the sound now. Chapter One. I am a lawyer, and I am in prison. It's a long story. I'm 43 years old, and halfway through a 10-year sentence handed down by a weak and sanctimonious federal judge in Washington, D.C. All of my appeals have run their course, 
And there is no procedure, mechanism, obscure statute, technicality, loophole, or Hail Mary left in my thoroughly depleted arsenal. Ooh, that sounds good. Can't hear, Eric. Turn your ox off or something. (laughs) 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 No, no, I'll tell you when. I'll tell you when. So um, now... That's, uh, so if you want to uh, listen to an Audible book, you just go to the – or if you want to buy an Audible book, go to aussietechheads.com.au forward slash – no, don't worry about the forward slash. aussietechheads.com.au. There's an Audible banner on the front. If you want to get a free audio book, an Audible audio book, and you haven't got it before, you can sign up with the audio uh, – clicking on the audio banner, sign up, and uh, you can get a free book. So there you go. Yours oh, yeah, am I back? Maybe you can get am that one. Yes, you are. All right. Sorry, mate. That's all right. Yes, so there you go. So I was reading the ebook, and I thought I'm going to get the audio book as well. So good stuff. Uh, that one is uh, if you're not a member, if you're not on, if you if you sign up now, you'll get that book for free. Yes. Yep. So you can and do if that. You're a, and if you're a subscriber, you'll get uh, one free credit a month, which means you'll get that book for free this month or next month. Um, if not, if you're not a member, twenty six dollars. Best to become a member, I think. But yeah. So once again, not a member. Jump on the webpage, hit the banner, sign up, get that one for free. Now, um, we're going to run through a couple of stories here now. So, uh, Shano, Z-Box, 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 Z-Tags, what's that all about? All right, so basically that's a, um, a new app that has just been launched in Australia. It's, um, they've trialled it in America and the UK for a while. Um, it's... I guess it has some of the technology that that Shazam app had, where oh, yeah. it can, um, yeah, you know, based on sound and pattern and music and all that kind of stuff, it can then um, take you to like if if you've got like if you're watching a show and they've got like a a soundtrack in the background, it'll detect what song it is, and then yeah, you know, it'll take you to somewhere like iTunes where you can buy the um. By the by, the song, or if you're watching, um, I think the example they use in the article is watching the Ellen DeGeneres show. Great. They can just pick up the fact <laughs> the um, it's not the best example, um, but they um, they could have picked up any other show. Oh but no! They um, they basically it's smart enough to know patterns and voices and all that kind of stuff to know what show you're watching, and then um, you uh, I think you can actually have the ability to kind of click on different things in the um. In the in the video feed or whatever it is that you're watching the show on, um, so you can buy things like you know Ellen's shoes and and all that kind of oh, stuff, or if they're way. actually, um, or if they're actually you know, flogging something, um, it'll take you straight to wherever you know, their website is that you you can buy it. So it's um, it's yeah, you know, it's online shopping on steroids. Oh, doesn't it? Yeah, look, it's probably it's probably the way to go. It probably does sound alright. I suppose depends how much it costs. I guess <coughs> if the box was free, I'd give it a go. Probably should be if it's a, like a TV buying thing, but uh, but yeah, so it sounds good. Sounds good. Can't wait for that one. Now, uh, Will, Will, hello, wake up, Will. Yes. <laughs> You've got something about Samsung. They're they're, they're selling truckloads. <coughs> well, um, in case I don't see him with it properly, it's like forty eight degrees in here now. <laughs> it's not good. I thought you'd passed um, out before. <laughs> Um, yeah, so basically Samsung sells 30 million Galaxy S3s, which uh, overtakes iPhone 4 as the world's best-selling smartphone. Now, given that it's only been out a couple of months, um, that's not a bad effort, really. But basically, they've sold over 30 million in uh, Q3 of 2012. Um, they, the iPhone 4S sold uh, 18 million. Uh, sorry. They sold over 18 million Galaxy S3s in the period between July and September in comparison to Apple's sales of just over 16 million. Um, Ooh, so very close. Very the, close. The uh, sales during this time, they saw the US launch of the Galaxy S3 and the world were worldwide release of the iPhone 5, just. Um, but the iPhone 4 and 4S also saw a drop in price. So it's going to be interesting to see if that makes much mm. difference to the, the sales. Um, but now, Eric, the iPhone is everywhere in all markets, is it? Or uh, um, is it not? All markets, you mean countries? Yeah. Yeah. So that's in like... Um, not all. Not all. They're still trying to get a, a bigger foothold in China. Mm. 
Um, they're rolling them out slowly in you know, obscure places, but um, I don't think they're in all countries. But you can get them. I mean, you, you know, great. The, the grey market is huge in iPhones, so um, they're not in all markets. No, well, neither is Android. I suppose it's it's not that easy to roll them out in two hundred and forty two countries. No, and and will you've got uh, you've got here Science Engine Mod a new release. Ten. Yeah, yeah. Also, just want to finish on that other story. That oh, there's sorry. also been th- three million Galaxy Note twos sold in that period of time, and they've only been out a couple of weeks. So, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the uh, what we're we talking about, Cyanogen, the new Cyanogen mod. Uh, anybody who has an Android phone will benefit from from basically taking off the bloated crap that the telcos put on, and you put on a modded firmware, which is the vanilla straight Android designed to work on your phone correctly. Even minus um, the apps, the Google apps and stuff. Is this, this is true, isn't it? Uh, it? Well, it doesn't ship with those because they're not part of the, the open source alliance software. That's right. so but you, you a, can just download You can download yeah. that and, and add those as so well. So it's very clean, just like a fresh Windows install. Pretty much. Windows um, 8 clean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the, the Cyanogen mod team basically have... Just punched out Sonogen Mod, which is their Android 4.1 release uh, as a stable mod, which has been pretty neat. Been waiting that for coming out for a while. Uh, obviously, it's only on certain devices at the moment. The more popular devices it's available on um, because it's sort of it's it's an open developer community. So obviously, you know, if you've got a, a five-year-old phone, you will find some sort of mod there for it. But you know, I actually just updated mine to. Uh, Cyanogen Mod 9 just came out for mine like last week. Yep. And I just used a Clockwork Mod update. It updated, restarted. Perfect. Not a problem. So much quicker running uh, Android, whatever I'm running on. I can't think what it is on the new one. Um, but yeah, it's just so much quicker than it was. I mean, I already had Cyanogen 7 on prior to that. So so yeah, it's, it's great. Um, well, that's good. And it, if you are having troubles with your phone... Um, that's the way I would recommend you do it. Most of the problems are caused, unless you happen to actually just get a faulty handset like Glenn did. For the most part, the problems are caused by software. So try that. It won't void your warranty. The telcos will try to tell you it will. As soon as you mention the fact that it's actually an open source project and they don't own the software, they can't do anything about it. So, Oh, that's a good tip. Thanks, Will. Now, um, we're just going to run through some stories pretty fast here now, just some uh, leftover ones. There's always leftover stories. If you want to see the, all the stories that we have uh, for the week, uh, you can go to the aussietechs.com.au webpage again and um, go and look for show notes. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can download or just have a view of the show notes. There's always more in the show notes than what we actually talk about. But just quickly, just to round off what uh, some of the things I've um, pulled down this week, the ACCC has won $7 million in three months from uh, various uh, causes that they've taken to court. So that uh, looks like they're doing something. But seven million in three months sounds like a lot, but obviously no uh, um, uh, petrol companies involved in that. Otherwise, that should run into the billions. Or, or supermarkets, no doubt. And I get you, guarantee it cost them twenty million to get the seven million. Probably, yeah, probably. So uh, one case is involving a local operation PC maker HP, uh, and it's alleged alleged misleading ac- actions towards consumers over faulty products and warranties. Mid last month, the ACCC said HP had breached Australian consumer laws by deceiving customers around product repair eligibility and warranty periods. It said HP. I bet you that involves CPU fans. Well, have you, have, sure. Have you, is that your issue, Shane? You had a problem. I remember I had that uh, Dicky laptop, and it was a CPU fan, and the repairer said that we can't do it because we're not a registered repairer, and you'd have oh, to go an yeah. hour out of your way to get it done. Yeah, right. Were you on warranty, mate? Uh. Not the matter of fact, no, because it was over 12 months. It was about 18 months or something. Yeah, how convenient. Yeah, so the ACCC alleged HP advised customers the warranty period for its products was limited to an express period, and for any repairs or replacements needed after the expiration of the express period, HP would only repair faulty products if the customer paid for it. Whoa! Oh, uh, (laughs) that's dodgy. That is dodgy. Now, another one... Oh, boo-boo! You've done a stupid thing, boo-boo! Hey, boo-boo! Where's my other picnic basket? Now, a password hole found in Skype. Skype temporarily disabled its password reset <laughs> capability last night while engineers investigated. Surprise, the surprise, issue. Microsoft. So there you go. But it looks like it's all uh, pretty much dandy now. But apparently yeah. they've known about it for months and they just patched it up now. They well have. Well done, Microsoft. They Good have. One. There you go. 
There you go, Glenn. You're trying to get out of that Vista machine. Just install Skype on it and log in through that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I won't give that a shot tomorrow. Sounds, sounds, <laughs> sounds like the go. Now, uh, what's this? What, what, what's, what's this one here? Um, the Apple device gets Nokia Maps here. Nokia's here. Application yes. called Here will run on Apple's iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch devices. Uh, it will be available soon for free. So, so soon for free. I mean, you must have to pay for it now. So, oh, you, Glenn. Yeah. Also, Ooh, yes. speaking of maps. The turn by turn, um, vo- uh, <clears throat> turn by turn directions on maps for Australia got turned on today, on oh, Apple. Turn by turn, is that in yes. as in like say the street names? Yes. Hell thing on that. I trust an Apple product to get that right. Oh, Here you go. Sweet. Listen, listen, listen. And Android's only had it for oh, I don't know five years. You be quiet. <laughs> he Hang loves on. it when I'm right. <laughs> Starting route to Philip Moore. See? And then you starting add, route to silly blow. Philip Maul, you moron. So as you nice, drive, it nice. tells you turn left here, turn left there. Yeah. So that's 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 the yeah. So now so it's much less less annoying than a standard GPS then. So now it'll tell <laughs> you. Is, now it'll tell you the, the street name. Is, it's, it's it tells you the street name. Yes. Oh, turn nice. left in Doncaster Avenue or whatever. Nice. Forty minutes, whatever. Forty meters. The only thing is, you got to have it plugged into your car. Oh, not so nice. Your battery will get. Your battery will get chewed because well, all the directions are coming down off off the off off the um <clears throat> off the internet. I haven't got a, not, a car yeah, thing for my phone yet. Well, the, you better find one. Does the Apple Store even have them yet? Yeah, they've just no. They Apple Store doesn't, but other people do. Right. Um, right. You can go on to do a search on. Um, which actually, no, you can buy you can buy adapters from Apple. I don't do adapters. But you're better off buying the direct lightning connector yep. because it's got the right the right wattage for the yes. phone. Yeah, yeah. Um, yep. If you just do a search, I think Belkin is starting to make them. You can just order right. them online. What hundred bucks? I, would have, I was going to say I would have thought Belkin would be doing them. Belkin seem to be getting their mitts and all that sort of stuff lately. Mm. Yeah, well, they were the first people to come up with a decent um, iPad mini cover because Apple still also, don't have any other than the smart cover. I also love I'll Belkin's uh, mag- magna charge dock. I think it's fantastic. It's a little bit overpriced, but basically every device you plug, whether it's mini USB or whatever it is, you just plug this little tiny miniature little thing into the plug. And then when you get home, you just chuck your phone onto the table and there's a big you know, 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter pad that you put down there and any device that you've got it plugged into charges. I think that's a fantastic idea. Right yes. now, it is very good. Now I have to look for something like that because I don't have a car charger and I want one because it does flatten your battery. Now Amazon, oh Eric, 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 Amazon live from Sydney yeah. Data Center next Tuesday. Woo! Yeah, but what, <laughs> what does that mean for us? For us, mate. <laughs> That's stuff I know. <laughs> no, well, what, isn't that the? It's the AWS Equinox SYD three clusters ready to go. Amazon you Web. Need- I need one of those. I don't know about you, but... <laughs> oh, I need three. Amazon's <laughs> web services will begin serving customers from its first Australian data center next Tuesday. So if you've got stuff with Amazon on their, their web-based servers, I'd imagine that it's going to get Well, served. I suppose that'll be if you're doing any music uploads and documents, because they've got that... Stuff like that. That, um, S3. that locker thing. That's you right. know, it would be fantastic as if we actually had internet speeds in this country that would warrant having Australian servers. Oh, mm. I do, Will. Yeah, just like just like when I tried. No, the, really. Just like when I first started with Crash Plan, it took me six months to back up the stuff I wanted to back up. Yes, well, that's it. <laughs> They're not the same problem with with Backblaze. I've, up, I've uploaded five hundred gig or something, and it's taken yeah, it took six months to do it. But in a way, that's not a bad thing because if you had NBN one hundred down, forty up, or one hundred up, one hundred down, and you you had to upload one hundred five hundred gig, you'd go through your plan in two days. Yeah. That's the problem. You just have to have a bigger plane. Now, well, yeah, well, I want a side. three terabyte plan, please. <laughs> well, I've got a one terabyte on standard internet, so and I go through that. Uh-huh. How do you, what? How much porn are you watching? <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> Holy <laughs> majesty! I'm, I'm still stressed. <laughs> do you know? Do you know? I probably you're not doing it right. I probably my downloads <laughs> are probably do something. My download is just no, over hundred gig. <laughs> I don't download a hundred. Yep. That's because you're stealing other people's bandwidth. 
<laughs> I am not. Why would I want to? Why would I want to steal Wi-Fi if I could have? If I've still got massive amounts of cable space to go. Now, anyway, because it's free. Hello. No, no, no. I'd do that if I was shaped. Now, um, <laughs> if, if you want to know how to get a free Xbox uh, with Dodo, have a look at the show notes. There's a story there. Now, you guys, I'll give you all a chance to whip, whip through any last stories that you might have. Uh, Eric, do you have any last stories you wanted to all right. get out? Right, just uh, just headlines, okay? Yep. Samsung. Not interested in settlement with Apple over patent issues. Read that in the show notes. Uh, Apple tops U.S. retail chain sales at six thousand dollars per square foot. Um, that's a uh, beach Tiffany, uh, Lulamon Athletica coach Michael Kors. You don't know these stores, but I do. Of course. Um, <laughs> Apple and Google remain in talks. What's a, that? She's a chick. To, I said I don't know Tiffany. She's a chick two doors down with the red light out the front. Yeah, that's the why you're going through your bandwidth. <laughs> <laughs> is it, is it voyeurism? The voyeur can. That's right. <laughs> Apple and Google remain in talks to buy the remaining Kodak Kodak patents. Ooh, Kodak. Um, what Everyone else? Everyone needs a friendly duck. And that's it. <laughs> read it in the show notes. Maybe read all about it. Headlines. Read all about it. Maybe yeah. it's Tiffany's duck. Um, <laughs> Will, did you have it? That's a rabbit. We've been through this. Oh, um, sorry. Yeah. The- <laughs> Uh, the, the one thing I did kind of want to mention is Nikon has just released their new Coolpix S800C. Uh, it's, you know, their Coolpix, their point-and-shoot cameras, uh, except the new one is Android-based. It's every bit an Android phone. It has all the functionality except the actual phone call functionality. It has the Wi-Fi built in so you can take photos, and if you're in a Wi-Fi area or you're at home, for example, they'll automatically upload to, you know, your favorite photo. So it's a tablet. A camera slash tablet. Pretty much, yeah. So um, you, can, you can check Facebook, check your emails, yeah, you take photos. The upside to it being um, like this is you can obviously you can use uh, photo editing software directly on the device as well, so you can edit the photos before you upload them. You can tap into storage device and, and do things like that. There's a lot of functionality within the camera that you can actually use um, – access much easier and much quicker because it's all a, a graphical interface. Uh, it does, I don't have the specs in front of me, but I did read it before, and it does uh, 1080p, 60 frames a second video. Um, Sweet. And it does, I think off the top of my head, it's an 8 or a 10 megapixel, uh, yeah, 10 megapixel camera with 10 by optical zoom. And it's, depending on where you go, anywhere from 488 or 499 from Harvey Norman through to about four hundred bucks, roughly, on at Camera House. So um, we're starting to see Android become mainstream. There's this camera. There's a uh, I can't think of the name of the company. What if because Android gets a lot of viruses? What if someone hacked into your camera and then you're uploading it? Say, hey, mum, look at this photo I just took, and it's like a porn photo that you didn't put up there. Android doesn't get a lot of viruses. Ah, <laughs> um, <laughs> funny one. The um. There's Headdex, I think. There's a company called Parrot, I think, that's making uh, Android-enabled Headdex. Same thing, Wi-Fi, GPS, uh, all that sort of stuff built in. And it's basically you know, a tablet, but it's a media center as well. Uh, the upside to, and with this goes with the camera as well as like the, the face decks, uh, Headdex and stuff in car, is that Android supports USB input as well as output. So you can hook up... Uh, if you wanted to do streaming, for example, with this device, you could hook up a keyboard so you could have the chat room open. You could you could use a keyboard, or you can use a mouse, or you can you know hook up a, a hub and and do things like that as well. So yeah, um, something to look out for. There That's are cool. a couple more coming to market as well. So yeah, good stuff. Now Will's got some more stories. If you want to see the rest of his stories, you can go to the show notes. Now uh, Shane, did you have any more anything else that you wanted to get off your chest before we leave uh, this episode? Uh, I might just do um, what Eric did. Just rattle through all my um, headlines. Yes. Galaxy Note two landing next week, uh, but telcos are quiet on pricing. Mm. Um, our brand is strong enough to sell 4G smartphones. It's a story about Telstra branded um, smartphones, 4G, but they're really those um, ZTE phones, and, and all Telstra branded phones have, have been ZTE for as long as I can remember. Chinese, yeah, pretty much. Chinese OEM, <laughs> ZTE. Oh, geez, I don't know about that. Next to the Coles ones, uh, I reckon. 
Uh, <laughs> Put him in a special spin. <laughs> yes. uh, on the run, although I believe he's now been caught, he was um, apparently buried under under sand or something. The um, the McAfee boss, they finally caught up with him. He was um, buried under Wadis. sand. Yeah, apparently he was, he was buried. He, 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 he hit himself. Oh, he's yeah. done a sedan. Done a whole yeah, pretty much. Thing. <laughs> pretty much. Right. So yeah, look, I know I saw the I saw that come up in the chat room. I can only see half the half the, the loungers chat tonight. But I did I saw I saw Belize come up and I thought, oh yeah, that story. So so this guy, he lived Belize. So he this guy, what's his name? That's um, in the Caribbean if anyone wants to know, and it's a tax haven. Okay. Is that why he's there? Oh, like, I don't know why he's there. I'm just saying that that's what it is and that's where it is. He could have been there for that reason, but I cannot speculate. So this guy, what's his? I don't even know his name. Uh, John John McAfee is said to have been uh, associating with notorious gangsters and also being taken, uh, and also begun taking bath salts, the drug that leads to so- physioactive episodes, including extreme violence in some cases. Gee. Mm, so anyway, what happened was his next door neighbour was murdered. You know, found with a knife hanging out of his his lower chest or something. And wonderful. Yeah, and so anyway, this guy goes, this is how the story goes. He goes, next door neighbor's got murdered. I'm out of here. So now all <laughs> the coppers just want to just talk to him about it. You know, who knows if he's done it or not? Who knows? But anyway, coppers want to talk to him about it, but he's flown. He's, he's, not, he's not stopping to talk to anyone. He's saying that the coppers want to kill him. He's saying that the president of Belize uh, wants to kill him, and the president is saying he's a nut job. So um, I think I think the president might yeah, be a little th- bit right. I think he slightly is. I'm just reading some of this stuff that he's posted on the McAfee uh, user boards. Um, he's changed his username to Stuffmonger, and he mm. posted more than 200 times over the next nine months about his ongoing quest to purify psychoactive drugs. Um, he's a huge fan of MDPV, he wrote. I think it's the finest drug ever conceived, not just for the indescribable hypersexuality, but also for the smooth euphoria and mild come down. So there you go. I think he's slightly lost the plot. I think he's off Maybe the planet. He might need to run a virus scan. I think that explains why his software is... So, I think that explains why his software is so much garbage. Is you know what it was? He actually installed McAfee once and it sent him into a mental breakdown. <laughs> no, you know, no, it wasn't the installation. It was the uninstallation. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> Trying to get rid of it is what sent him into a mil- mental spaz. So is he still is he still in charge of McAfee? Well, not anymore. <laughs> He's not even in charge of his own senses at the he moment. That's right. He can barely wash. So, <laughs> he can barely wipe. So he's, he's, he's 67 years old. So I think that puts pay to um, uh, that the drugs are good. You know, 67. <laughs> and uh, yeah. He, 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 that explains the hypersexuality euphoria. He's not wiping. He's rolling around <laughs> in the sand instead. And that's what that's what he's trying to do. Trying to... Try, trying to oh, trying dude. to come to the same end. All right. So, um, well, that's it. That's it from us. So, uh, thanks to uh, Brad and TechWebcast.info, we replay the show before Aussie TechEds each Thursday night from around about seven o'clock for him. Aussie TechEds, of course, is always on Thursday night, seven thirty Queensland time. Work the work the times out if you're in another part of the world, please. And, oh, and quickly, I have to mention. I'm sorry to be a pain in the ass. I have to mention. Talk back tech. If everything goes according to plan, we'll be coming back in the next couple of weeks. Oh no! What's the lineup, Will? <laughs> we got a lineup. Oh, I haven't got that. <laughs> was, oh, okay. Uh, it'll be moved to a different night, probably like a Saturday or a Sunday night, something like that. Um, we've got to work the details out. But look up for myself and Shane. Hopefully, he doesn't know yet. But Shane, you're in, you're interested, aren't you? <laughs> I'm um, sure we could work out the details yeah, of the contract. Okay, yeah. so look out for Talkback Tech. Come yeah, back. Sp- you, Shane, you said I'll speak to you offline and you don't call him. <laughs> and That's what Glenn did. He hasn't rung me all week. I've been waiting for him. He doesn't want our business, obviously. Talk now, to my management. Oh, I, me- I, right. I remember that. On, talk to my people. I remember that on Friday, <laughs> you know, and I forgot. I, yeah, I remember to oh, ring, dear. ring Will. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, thanks, uh, uh Whatever's that's it. Good stuff. Don't forget the hosting <laughs> chat room, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, lounge. Uh, Twitter's is Aussie at Aussie Tech Ads at Eric with a K Franco at Mr Tomkinson and at Shane with a Y nineteen seventy three. Email Glenn Eric or Will or Shane at AussieTechHeads.com.au. Don't forget you can listen to the show in the uh, sort of like a radio style format 
uh, through the Shoutcast service 24-7. Uh, there's different shows up there. It's not just this show 24-7, thank goodness. There's a couple of, there's a couple <laughs> of different shows up there. So get in there and have a look. Uh, if you want help setting it up, you go to the aussietechs.com.au forward slash radio. And uh, you can also stream it off that webpage as well if you want to. So uh, whatever you want, whatever you can, just just get it. Just 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 consume it. Consume it. Be happy. And uh, Just yeah, get it in ya. Get it, get it in ya. That's right. There's <laughs> the cricket. Good to see the cricket back. It's great. I love it. We should have beat those bloody uh, South Africans. But, um, Tony, come back. It's boring without you. It is a little bit boring, isn't it? So you will. Yeah. Uh, was it Tony or Bill? Sorry, Tony. Um, big shout out. It was Tony. Yeah. Tony. Didn't, didn't, don't know how he went after his operation, but they're uh, terrible. Tony Grigg. Terrible, Tony terrible, Grigg. terrible stuff. Terrible stuff. All right. Uh, so unless anyone's got anything else to say, we're going to call it quits. That's it. See you later. That's All it. right. We'll see. <laughs> you. <laughs> thanks, Lounge. Thanks, listeners. Thanks, Will, Eric, and thanks, Shane. And we'll see you all next week for another episode of Aussie Tech Heads. See you later. Bye bye.